Next round's on me. The bartender stops what she's doing. She goes, you American. Working in the automotive industry, doing promotional work and the radio show and you know this YouTube stuff and, and all that. You know, I've made a lot of friends in the automotive industry all over the world. You know, I get offers to go do things all the time. And I love working events and doing shows. And, uh, you know, I've worked shows all over the Southeast. And, you know, and of course, I'm a SEMA every year. And, you know, and just big events. And I love it. But, you know, working even at SEMA, you get to network with, with people all over the country. I mean, the, the car community's worldwide. I met a really good friend. And his name is Sam Hard. And Sam, the best way to describe him, if Richard Rollins... And Mrs. Doubtfire had a love child. It would be Sam Hart. This dude's got all the bling and the slick back salt and pepper hair, but talks like Ringo Starr. Me and him just instantly hit it off. I get a phone call. And of course, you know, when he calls you on the phone, it's got 37 digits in it. So you know instantly, you know, it's, it's Sam calling. And, and I love talking to him with that with that that accent, you know. And everybody talks about my accent all the time and the way I sound, but I love to hear him talk. This is just the way he carries his voice. He could tell you to go to hell, and you would thank him for it. Like I love it, you know. And he pumps you up when he talks to you. Like he, as soon as you pick up and say hello, he says, "How are you doing, you legend?" And I love it, you know. And and, and I, just, I love talking to him. Sam said, he said, I've got an opportunity for you. He said, uh, there's a really large American car show here in the UK, and they're looking for an American voice. And he said, my friend, you have it. Good enough. I said, hey, you know what? I'm all ears. Give him my information, whatnot. Not an hour later, I got a phone call. And I will never forget, I was actually riding down 85 to go look at a car. So I had him on speakerphone in my truck. I'm just cruising down the road. And we're talking, and they're like, can you say it again? Can you say this again? Can you do this again? We love the way you talk. And they're just giddy, everyone, on the other side of the phone. Finally agreed on some terms, and guess what? Old Rabbit's booked and ready to head to London to host American Speed Fest. 900 American cars. We had NASCAR Euro Series racing, Legends cars, Indy cars. We had all this stuff at Brands Hatch Speedway. I mean, you know, I've never been to the UK or anything like that before. And I mean, you know, I'm calling all this race in action and, you know, you know, making announcements and virtually the voice of the event. You know, I recorded television commercials for this and audio for it. And, you know, months and months in advance to the show. So it's time to head that way. So, you know, I get on the plane. Well, we land at Heathrow Airport, you know, huge, gorgeous airport. You know, um... You know, we land and, you know, so I get off the plane, you know, grab my bags, going through down the escalators and all this stuff. And, you know, there's a guy there with a sign that says, Rob Pitts, commentator dude. So I knew that was my ride. I wear Chuck Taylors a lot when I go out and things like that. But when I fly, I've got a pair of red Ugg loafers that I wear that I love. And these things are bright red. And I absolutely love these things. And I wear them everywhere. Here I am, I get in a BMW, on the wrong side of the car, on the wrong side of the damn road, riding to my hotel at this track at Brands Hatch Speedway. And, you know, we're riding down the highway, and he's asking me 40 million questions about America in the U.S. And, you know, never been, and just everything. Does everybody talk like they're in a movie there? Not everybody, but a lot of us do. We get to my hotel, gorgeous hotel, at the track, you know, I got to see the track, just the outside of the track's gorgeous, landscaping, manicured, just top notch. Oh, and they said, well, your room won't be ready till three o'clock. Well, it's nine o'clock in the morning. Well, next thing you know, my phone starts ringing. It's my good old buddy, Sam. Sam said, what are you doing, legend? And I said, well, I'm over in your neck of the woods. What are you doing? He goes, where's your hotel? I said, I'm at, at Brands Hatch Speedway. He said, well, that's about two hours away. About an hour and 20 minutes he was there. So a convertible Saab, late model, convertible Saab comes pulling up and there's cameras all over it. He said, grab your bags. He said, you're not waiting on a room, you're coming with me. He said, I'm gonna show you London. So now we ride an hour back to London. 
where I came from just two hours earlier in this Saab convertible, top down, cameras going. You, I mean, GoPros everywhere. The driver, his name is Carl. Carl's over here with a 4K camera like this. And me and Sam are sitting in the back seat of this thing, of a little Saab. We're riding through London. It's Buckingham Palace. This is, he said, you know the London Bridge? That's it. We went over it. Like I was getting the, the, just the crash course, the Groupon rate tour of London. And Sam is a very just wild guy. He's like, fish and chips, that's what we need to eat while we're riding around London. Recording this. Well, as he says that, we're right in front of Buckingham Palace. And they're doing a lot of construction on Buckingham Palace. Over there, you got the little Ford Transits. It's like the little police vehicles over there. Little paddy wagons is what they like riding around. And he said, he said, yeah, the cops don't mess with me around here. We're good. You know, so we got, we're riding around this side with cameras everywhere on it. So we're sticking out like a turn punch bowl right off the bat. And next thing you know, boom, blue lights. And they mean the same thing over there as they do over here. They ran his tag, and basically they ran his tag. They knew everything about him. You know, so they walk up, and they say, Mr. Blah, 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 you know, and this and that. And he showed him his license and whatnot. He goes, what's the deal with all the cameras? Then Sam Hard steps up. He goes, oh, you're Sam Hard from Hard Up Garage. He goes, that's me from Hard Up Garage. I cannot. Sam's going to kill me because my impersonation is horrible. And then he goes, you see this guy right here? And he points to me. He's a legend. This is Rob Pitts. And the guy looks, and this is the funniest thing ever. He goes, you're that rabbit guy. I've seen you on Vinwinky. I said, yes, sir, that's me. He goes, can we get a picture with you? So me and Sam take selfies with the cops. And then they told us not to be riding around Buckingham House with all these cameras. That's why they pulled us over. So after about 10 minutes of that, we get back in the car. And all this is on video, every bit of it. And we go to Sam's garage. And he shows me his garage. He shows me his Fast and Furious Charger that's going to be at SEMA this year. And he shows me, you know, the tea bucket he's building and all these cars he's got in his shop and, and all this stuff. But we get done with this. I said, Sam, I said, I said, don't you think I need to get back to my hotel room time we get there? You know, it'll be time for me to you know, check in and get into my room. He goes, you're not staying in a hotel room tonight. You are my guest. So we go back to his flat in downtown London. Absolutely gorgeous apartment. You know, just beautiful, right, I mean, just in the center of London. And I mean, just, you know, decorated to the nines. We had a wonderful time. And, uh, you know, so we get there and he said, here's your bedroom for the night. So we'll take you back to the hotel in the morning. But he said, I want you to get a little power nap. He said, because we're going out tonight. I'm going to show you a good time in London. So I wake up from my power nap. I take a shower, shave, get straightened up, change clothes, kick my slippers off, you know, get dressed up and get ready for a night out. I figure we're going to go out to dinner, go grab a few drinks, something like that. Keep in mind, this is like a Thursday night. I walk outside and it's gorgeous and the cobblestone roads and all that stuff. And come outside smoking a cigarette, just killing time. And then Sam comes out. He goes, you ready to have some fun? So I'm always ready to have some fun. It's starting to get dusty dark outside. And then here in the distance, a rumble. A 76 Rolls Royce rolls up with Flowmasters on it. Absolutely gorgeous car. Beautiful condition. He goes, that's our ride to dinner. And his buddy's driving it. So me, Carl, the film guy, Sam, and a couple of his buddies all pile up in this Rolls. Down the cobblestone streets we go. And it's got more roundabouts in Atlanta, in London. So we're going around these roundabouts. Well, the very first thing, Sam hollers to his buddy driving. He said, well, this thing spin a tie. So we start doing donuts around a roundabout in this 6,000-pound Rolls Royce. Thinking of the lie, I'm going to tell the police to keep me from going to prison, probably. We finally end up at a bar. He said, there's one rule. You don't say a word till I tell you to. Like I said, we get out of the car, we're walking down the sidewalk, and I hear Southern Rock, and it tickles me. And now I know how people feel like if you're originally from somewhere, and then you go to somewhere that's a theme of where you're from. This is an American bar, a very popular bar over there, huge American bar. And they're playing 38 Special, and I'm a big 38 Special fan. I love 38 Special. I grew up in the South. Everybody loves 38 Special. But there's one catch. It's played by a 38 Special UK cover band. 
Imagine, if you will, Austin Powers covering Hold On Loosely. Hold on loosely, but don't let go. If you cling too tightly, love, you're going to lose control, yeah. It was hilarious. The music sounded perfect. The vocals were, were not quite there, but you know what? In spirit, they were. And Sam, I went, and I opened my mouth, he goes, we walk in, of course, everybody's, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, finding a Bud Light in London doesn't happen. We're at the bar, and Sam orders all, all around. We're standing there. You know, we have that round, and I really didn't say anything. We're just kind of talking among each other, just real quietly. This place is packed. Aside next round, it's all me. Well, by this time, we have about 20 of us. A little entourage. So I walk up to the bar and be like, hey, next round's on me. The bartender stops what she's doing. She goes, you American? I said, yes, ma'am. The next thing you know, I turn around and everybody's looking at me. The band stopped. Everything. And they're like, say that again. Say what again? You American. And these guys are buying me shots and buying me rounds. Say, say my name. Say this. Say that. Does everyone talk like, like you over there? Oh my God, every time you talk, it sounds like a movie. I heard that probably 30 times while I was there. You know, so here we are in this bar. We had to get out of there because like I was being smothered at this point. And that's why Sam didn't want me to talk because he knew that was what was going to happen. So Sam says, I got a better idea. I got another car coming to get us. We've all been drinking. That's a responsible thing to do. He said, be here in 10 minutes. I walk outside, smoke a cigarette. Off in the distance, a Mercedes stretch limousine comes pulling up. Driver drives up on the curb, hops out, and says, I'm your ride. So we all pile up in this Mercedes, a diesel Mercedes limousine. You know, it's getting close to closing time now. Keep in mind, I've been up for all this time, had a little power nap, still haven't ate yet. Sam gets the bright idea, we're going to go to a casino because they're open all night long. So we go to the casino. And it's just like any small casino here in the States. It's kind of worked the same way. They had food, thank God. So I actually got to eat. We played a couple of hands of poker. That was fun. And a few more drinks. And I remember waking up at his flat. I remember, don't remember leaving the casino. I don't remember any of that. I think I was so sleepy that I just like, I forgot, I've lost everything. It was like amnesia. I don't even want to know. And uh, so I woke up at his flat, you know, seven o'clock in the morning, Carl beating on my door. Let me know when you're ready to head back to the hotel. So Carl runs me back to the hotel. Sam's gone. Sam's recording his TV show. So me and Carl go back to the track. First day of American Speed Fest. Now keep in mind, I got a hangover from hell. Still very sleep deprived. So I walk into my hotel and there's a Starbucks in my hotel. Well, there's one catch that I've noticed. There's no such thing as like a grande or a venti. They're all one size. It's just little kitty cups of coffee. That's like enough coffee to get me wanting coffee. So I have to get about six of these to get what I'm used to normally getting in one. But so I got, I got a small coffee. I had a track meeting that day. Everything went good. You went over some of the guideline stuff. Um, American Speed Fest went off without a hitch. By far one of the best events I've ever hosted. Phenomenal time, phenomenal facility. Some of the prettiest American show cars you've ever seen in your life overseas. They had the national anthem sang by Elvis Presley. They had an impersonator. They flew in from the States to sing the national anthem. So it was pretty good that I got to introduce and, and interview Elvis Presley. A lot of these guys were experienced commentators. And working with them, you know, with the NASCAR Euro Series. And, uh, I mean, the racing action was awesome. If you like racing, racing there, racing here is the same thing. And you, you're going to love it. But um, the car share, like I said, was phenomenal. And they had the vendors there. And, I mean, it was just a great event. But yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's the time when Rabbit invaded London. Going somewhere in a hurry, ma'am? Let me explain your options. Never mind, I got this. TheTicketClinic.com Use the code VINWIKI at TicketClinic.com for a 10% discount on their ticket fighting services.